On May 4, 1970, the Ohio National Guard opened fire on a group of Vietnam War protesters at Kent State University, leaving four dead and nine wounded. More than 40 years after the infamous Kent State shootings, the school has opened a museum to commemorate the event. Among those wounded on that day was Dean Kaler, who was paralyzed by a rifle bullet to the spine. After the shootings, my first goal was to get better. Once I was better, um, I, I then came back to school here at Kent. And um, all through that getting better process and my return to Kent State University, was all there to help me try to put this into some perspective so that I can move forward with my life. One witness that day was Chuck Ayers, who went on to make political cartoons professionally. He is now the illustrator of Crankshaft. To have gone through an experience like that changes your entire life. Um, my life changed in ways that I can't even describe that day. Uh, there's never been anything in my life that was the same um, as it was on the morning of May 4th, 1970, as it was on the afternoon of May 4th. It just changed everything, and it, uh, it's influenced everything that I've gone through in life after that. Most have moved on, though they harbor unanswered questions about that day. My feelings today are much the same. It's not shock so much, but the surprise, the feeling of surprise is still there. It's inexplicable that the guardsman shot. And I will say that now, having studied the event for so long, having taught about the event for so long, that uh, I, I know irrefutably there was no reason for the guard to shoot. For Tom Saul, a Vietnam veteran whose brother was a guardsman at Kent State that day, the issue remains largely unspoken in his family. I said, where were you during the shootings? And he finally told me the story and talked for maybe 10 minutes and then just broke down and I could tell that he didn't want to talk about it anymore. And we haven't spoken about it since. One of the reasons he was in the guard was he's never been a violent person and certainly had no desire to go to Vietnam whatsoever and, and get involved in killing. Today, Students at Kent State approach student activism in different ways. I don't think it's the same type of activism. I think it's, it's really changed and it's almost obvious. I mean, just out on this campus 40 years ago, there was mass protests of thousands of students. Now it's kind of taken a more individualistic role or just even smaller groups. According to its president, Kent State has often tried to skirt the issues of May 4th but he sees this museum as a new chapter for the school. The events of May 4th are indelibly etched on Kent State University. We've decided to embrace our history rather than deny it and help teach future generations about what happened in American history at Kent State in 1970. For The Wall Street Journal, this is Caroline Porter in Kent, Ohio.